Hello, welcome to another video. I have a limit problem here that typically I would say do not use L'Hopital's rule, just go ahead and do some algebraic manipulations. But if you try that, it's going to take you a long time. Well, I tried it and I couldn't figure out how to resolve all the trig identities I was trying to use and it never worked out. So I came back to L'Hopital's rule and even L'Hopital's rule was a long journey. Okay. You know, when I say that you can use L'Hopital's rule repeatedly until you arrive eventually at an answer, this, this is one of those problems that you'll have to do, you do L'Hopital's rule several times before your answer shows up. Now, if you think there's an algebraic manipulation you can do or some trig identities you could plug in and transform this without L'Hopital's rule, please leave it in the comment and it will be appreciated. But for now, we're going L'Hopital's way and that's what we do. Let's get into the video. So the first thing we're going to do is do our plug-in. Remember that if the target limit is finite, the point is finite, it's not infinity, the first thing you want to do is to plug in your zeros. And you can see obviously that this is going to be 0 minus tan 0, which is 0 minus 0, which is 0, and this is 0 minus 0 also. So we have an indeterminate form of 0 over 0. And because that's the case that we have, we have to use L'Hopital's rule, otherwise we have to do manipulations which I don't know how to do. So let's say that we apply L'Hopital's rule in this case. We're going to have the derivative. It's going to be the same thing as the limit as x approaches 0 of the derivative of the top, which is 1 minus secant squared x, right, over 1 minus the derivative of this is going to be cosine x. Now, let's try to do the plug-in again. If I plug in 0, I get um, 1 minus secant squared 0, which is 1 minus 0, I mean 1 minus 1 rather, and this is 1 minus 1, that's still a, an indeterminate form, indeterminate form 0 over 0. So this still guarantees that we could use L'Hopital's rule, but that way it becomes crazy because taking these derivatives will become more and more complicated. So let's do L'Hopital's rule again. If I take the derivative of the top, I'm going to have, this is the limit as x goes to 0 of, this is going to be 0 minus the derivative of secant squared x. Now this requires the chain rule, so we're going to say it's secant x squared. So if we take the derivative of this, d dx, what do we get? Well, apply the chain rule here, it's going to be 2 secant x multiplied by the derivative of secant x, which is going to be secant x tan x. So this derivative is 0 minus 2 secant squared x tan x. And for the denominator, it's going to be 0 minus the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Okay. Um, I don't think it's looking prettier than what we started with. So, what do we do? Because if I do a plug-in, okay, let's clean this up. This is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 secant squared x tan x divided by sine x. If I plug in 0, just because of the presence of this tan x, because tan 0, no matter what this is, is going to be 0, so 0 takes care of this and everything is 0, and sine 0 is 0. It's another indefinite form, I mean indeterminate form, 0 over 0. So, L'Hopital's rule again. Let's do it. So if we apply L'Hopital's rule to this one more time, what do we have? We take the derivative of the top, and this is where it gets very crazy because you have a product of two trig functions, one requiring the chain rule and the other one just straight up differentiation. So let's, let's, let's see what that's going to look like. So if applied L'Hopital's rule, we're going to have two. Now the derivative of secant squared x, I think we did that before. The answer to secant squared x is 2 secant squared x tan x. Okay, so I don't have to redo this, but I have to apply the product rule 
for differentiation. So we're going to keep the first, differentiate the second. Wow, that's going to be a bit more complicated than I was expecting. So we keep the first, that's going to be secant squared x. Differentiate the second, which is going to be secant squared x. Okay, plus, differentiate the first, which means we're going to differentiate this, but the derivative of secant squared x is what we have here, which is going to be 2 secant squared x, 10x, and then you keep the second, which is 10x. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, that's the derivative of the top. And then the bottom is going to be just cosine x. Okay, now let's move on. So what do we have on the inside? This is going to be 2 secant squared x. No, secant to the fourth x. Yep, secant to the fourth x plus this is going to be 2 secant squared x tan squared x over cosine x. Okay, but we have to put the limit. Hey, limit as x goes to zero. Never forget that. Okay, limit as x approaches zero. So, what do you think this is going to be? Is anything missing? Oh, there was a minus sign here. Come on. Never forget about the minus sign. Okay. Can we do a plug-in? If we plug in zero here, what do we have? We get one. If we plug in zero here, this disappears because of the presence of tan. So this is going to be equal to negative two multiplied by one plus two times one times zero. And this gives us the cosine of zero, which is one. And it looks like our answer is going to be negative two plus zero over one is negative 2. Okay, so this limit is basically minus 2. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.